Hello everybody, Paul Devlin, Trust Chair here. I just wanted to give you a summary of a few of the points from the Trust Board of Directors meeting that we had earlier on. Um, first off to say that uh, this is the first time we were able to open our meeting up to a public live stream. So hopefully we had some members of the public observing us as a board of directors. It's one of those odd positives that's come from the pandemic. I'm really, really pleased we've been able to increase some of our accountability to the public. I'd like to mention just a few pieces that we covered off today. First of all, we heard about the 10-year review of our offender health services, a lot of work done in prisons and similar settings. And it was really good to get a retrospective view of how well those services have developed and to also recognise the hard work of the teams there in improving services. We were particularly struck by the move towards a different approach in the future, thinking about three aspects of care, uh, care to avoid custody, care whilst in custody and care after custody. It's work that is going to continue, but we did want to congratulate the Offender Health Services for their excellent work and developments and improvements over the years. We also recognise that in our adult mental health services there are some particular strains at the moment. Some of that is a result directly and indirectly of the pandemic. And we've certainly seen and recognised that there is an increase in acuity of many of the patients uh, who are taking up inpatient beds with us. Uh, but there's also an additional pressure um, because of the the, the beds that we've set aside, cohorted for people uh, suspected or having uh, COVID-19. So it's a really important recognition that whilst obviously there's lots of great stuff going on, there are additional pressures that have come from the pandemic itself. We heard a great deal about our community health services, including just getting a real sense of the breadth of services that we operate as a trust, which are really, really impressive. And we understood and heard about how the services are building on some of that excellent innovative work that has come through over the last few months. And we're looking forward to hearing more about that. We heard three particular aspects in relation to the Care Quality Commission, the CQC. The first off was an update, pleasing to hear, uh, that some conditions that have been placed around our Lucy Wade Ward regarding admissions have now been lifted and we're back to being able to take admissions and that's a really good development for us. And we also heard some very encouraging news from the uh, recently published CQC report on our ramped and learning disability services. And uh, it was a very positive, strong read with lots of really encouraging developments. And we were delighted as a board to see that for our colleagues at Rampton. There's plenty more that we need to do, we know, um, but it was great that the CQC was recognising so much of the good work that is going on there. We also took a really important report, our work towards zero suicide prevention strategy. The suicide prevention work is something that's absolutely critical to a trust like ours. And it was great to have both the strong strategy, but also the underpinning implementation plan beneath it. And I'm encouraged that through our board subcommittees, we will be uh, engaging and ensuring good governance of that strategy. The final piece I wanted to mention was just about our governance itself. We have reviewed and streamlined a number of aspects of the work of the Board of Directors. In part, this reflects some of our good learning from the pandemic, but it also is a way of us ensuring that we are using board time and board committee time in the most appropriate way to provide the right kinds of assurance for the organisation. So we did recognise that we had quite a busy board meeting, indeed quite a long board meeting today, but we covered off some really important work, including lots of business that didn't relate directly to the pandemic, demonstrating that we're able to keep on with a whole breadth of our work. 
And I'd like to finish just by saying a big thank you to our staff and our volunteers for all of your continued work for those who need and use our services. Thank you.